What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Storytime with Uncle Reddit. I'm John, and this is r slash Tales from Tech Support. Well, today we've got Uni. Pink Unicorn. I figured that wouldn't shock anybody considering the jackalopes up on my uh, clothes hanger there. All right, let's have a good Monday and read some tech support stories. The miscommunication that really heats things up. I worked at a vending company that placed vending and arcade machines at locations like restaurants, bars, and similar in exchange for either paying a fixed rent to the location owner or splitting the profits with the location owner. They also rented machines out for events and parties and such. This place for the most part had actual competent techs working for it. Unfortunately, I wasn't so great at helping to move large items, and they needed that more than they needed a full-time tech due to their rentals and events. Therefore, I had a relatively short period of employment there. One day we get a call from a bar that our shooting game was initially starting up okay when they turn it on upon opening the bar, but later on it would black out and show no signal on the screen. Yes, some arcade monitors do that. We knew by the title that this was one of those games that had a computer tower inside acting as the brain of the game rather than a custom arcade motherboard. This also meant that the tower in some cases used a standard ATX power supply, which we had several of laying around as spares for these types of games. After finding a power supply and verifying it worked using our tester, I headed over to the bar. It was soon enough after opening that the machine had not shut itself down yet, but I decided to do some exploratory surgery on it rather than just wait around for it to go wrong. I opened the back cover with the key and thankfully there is plenty of room around the tower to take its cover off while it's still in place. I popped the cover off and I saw that the CPU fan wasn't turning anymore. Well darn, I don't think we have a spare of that. On the other hand, we caught it before the actual CPU failed. Score one for whoever designed this motherboard. Clearly the computer was going into thermal shutdown. I noted in the ticket that the CPU fan was broken and I took pictures of both the fan itself and the model number on the computer tower case so that we could figure out what fan to order or find a broken tower of the same model to pull the fan from. Even with thermal throttling and shutdown, it's not wise to continue to run something that has improper cooling because hitting the upper limit repeatedly is still a good way to cause failure sooner or later. The machine had a removable power cord, so I decided to take it with me and let the bar manager know the reason I was taking it with me. He appeared to understand, so I went on my way. I also made a call to the boss and explained the whole thing. Fast forward about four weeks. While I was out replacing the monitor on another machine in a different location, I got a call from my boss. He said that the same shooting game is broken down at address and just showing no signal on the screen. The address sounded familiar, but I didn't make the connection in the moment. As I got closer to the location, the realization hit that it's the same one I had found the fan broken in. But how did they even get to the point of saying no signal? I entered the bar and just as I suspected, there was another power cord attached and plugged in. Sure enough, the screen was saying no signal. I tried to reboot it. However, instead of the single short beep that this machine usually made on startup, I get an ominous series of long beeps. I forget what the pattern was offhand, but it wasn't what you would want to hear when booting up a machine. I took the back cover off again and found that whoever put the new power cord on hadn't even closed up the tower, so it was still open. More importantly, the fan was still broken, so the CPU had been started and forced to run up to its limits multiple times. Normally I would try reseeding the RAM and possibly the CPU and graphics card to see if that fixes the problem. My hope of that working here was quite thin, knowing what's happened, but I might as well try something while I'm here. I pulled out the RAM first and put it back in. No change. Then I tried the graphics card. No change. The thing I saved for last, because it's not a pleasant task due to the thermal paste, is the CPU. Well, whatever. Might as well get it over with. So I unscrewed the heatsink, removed it, undid the lock on the CPU socket, and removed the CPU. Then put it back in and reattached the heatsink. Lights, camera, action. Power on and just as I suspected. No change. I get the same error beeps. Drat. I called my boss to see if he knew anything about the power cord finding its way back to the bar. It turns out that he had gotten a call that the power cord is missing, and he had just sent one of the other employees out there with another power cord. And that guy had just plugged it in, and when it booted up in front of him, he understandably assumed all was well. However, neither that employee or my boss had bothered to look at the ticket. The restaurant manager didn't mention anything either, and apparently assumed the problem was fixed or forgot what I had said, and didn't unplug the machine. I calmly reminded my boss to check the ticket from four weeks ago that had my name on it. After a moment of silence on his part, he surprisingly doesn't find a way to blame me, for once. Score one for him, but that's about all he got due to his generally poor attitude. 
Well, maybe two, because he wouldn't have stood for that kind of crap that went on at the other game room store I had worked for previously. The guy who didn't look at the ticket got an earful from the boss, but I don't think that was entirely fair because the boss could have checked the ticket himself, or the call taker if it wasn't the boss. I don't know who picked up the power cord is missing call. I told that employee that I didn't blame him. Yeah, it may not be directly the employee's fault. Um, there was a lot of things going on here. You know, like you said, whoever took the call should have checked. They should have checked to see if there was tickets. Why would the power cord be missing? Uh, you know, maybe somebody just swiped it, but still, you gotta check. Two, the bar manager should have let everybody in that place know, whether it was servers, cleaners, bar backs, bartenders, the owner, whoever, that that machine is out of commission until further notice. If I was the tech, I would have found another way besides just swiping the power cord to pretty much lock it out. Either some kind of hasp system. I mean, you had a lock with a key. Oh, it was your tech from your company that came out and unlocked it. Okay, so... Uh, Maybe a big old note on the back of the CPU or on the back of the tower that said, hey, don't plug this in. It needs a fan. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But hey, stuff happens. A five minute job. Not. So a user gave me an old laptop that was sitting in a drawer for several months. You can't log into it because in that time it fell off the domain. It also has the McAfee encryption on it. No problem, right? Just use the encryption recovery to bypass. Log in locally with us underscore ws and rejoin the domain, right? Wrong. The local admin password is not the usual password. And it's not in CyberArk. Boot from the BART USB and reset the USWS password. Easy? No. BART can't find the SAM database on the C drive. Why? Because of encryption. Decrypt drive and wait, BART finds the SAM database after decryption. Reset local admin password. Laptop also not in correct OU due to being off domain for a long time. Move laptop to correct OU in EPO, apply tag NDE decryption in EPO and wait a while. BART finds SAM database. Reset local admin password. Log in with local admin account. Rejoin to domain. Log in with my admin account to check on domain. Success! Five minutes turned into two hours. Huh? I don't know what all those acronyms mean. Hopefully some of you guys do. Uh, and for those of you that don't, don't feel bad because uh, we're in the same boat. Side note, does it bug you guys? Is it distracting to have my face shrunk down in the corner of the screen? Uh, what do you think? Let me know down below. If y'all don't like it, I'll quit doing it. I do have to do it for some stories on the other channel, the one-offs. It's a fair use copyright thing, but on here it's not so bad. But yeah, I kind of like it, but at the same time, if it bugs you guys, we'll, we'll play it by ear. Like this. Customer credit. While working for an ISP on Long Island, I had a customer call regarding his loss of internet service. A quick diagnosis discovered he had a rogue modem, meaning the internet service was never removed when his service was discontinued. For 18 months, he had internet service he wasn't charged for. Typically, when we discover that, we just cut the service off and that's that. Well, this gentleman was so accustomed to having service that when the service was removed, he called us to complain about the lack of service. I kindly explained the situation to the guy who was not happy. His service was out for the last three days and he wanted a credit. Oh my gosh. For service he hadn't paid for in 18 months. After conferring with the supervisor, this was my second call ever working there, I went back and said, we'd be happy to credit his service once he pays the back bill. We're going to process on his account for the last 18 months of service he had. <laughs> he hung up after this. Okay, maybe you forgot that you cut your service off and you were so accustomed to having it and you called in. I, okay, I get it. The guy explains it to you. You got to be pretty thick not to understand. Whoa, I just had 18 months of free service. I better just shut my trap and just move on. Nope, nope. Might as well just push buttons and demand a credit. Right. Good luck with that. Shorter Tales. Posted by you, Substantial Term 3843. He's got some good stories, so I like reading these. Many years ago, I worked for a small independent IT shop. I'm not proud of my time, behavior, or attitude during those years. It was my first job in IT. I was in my mid-twenties, and the atmosphere of the place was absolutely toxic. We thought we were gods, when really we were clowns and cowboys. All stories are around 15 years ago and to the best of my memory. I have some shorter stories. Cast will be me and story-specific customer. 
Number one, customer. Hi, I'm looking for advice about CPU cooling. Me, sure, what do you need? Customer, I wanna lower my CPU temps. Me, what's it running at now? Customer, around 30 to 40 Celsius. Me, that's fine, there's no reason to worry about that. Customer, isn't that rather hot? Me, I wouldn't worry until it's getting past 80 C, besides your PC will shut down if it overheats. Customer, then why are all these people online going on about bringing theirs down to 20 C or even 10 C with expensive cooling? Me, ah, do you remember when you were a little boy? Customer, uh, yes. Me, when you were at little school? Customer, yes. Me, my toy car is bigger than your toy car. Customer, <laughs> okay, I understand. Number two, regular customer. Oh God, please help me with my son's laptop. Me, sure, let's have a look. Regular customer, I'm rushing around trying to get everything sorted. My flight is in a few hours. Me, do you want to sort it out when you get back? Regular customer, no, it's to entertain him on the journey. Ah, it's her younger son. Me, oh, okay, I'll see what I can do. Regular customer, it's just the worst possible time. Me, don't worry, I'll do what I can for you. Regular customer, I've got to get home and finish packing everything. Me, let's see what we've got then. Regular customer, we're moving abroad for six months and it's just decided to stop working. Me, wait, so you're leaving the country for six months? Haven't finished packing, trying to get a laptop fixed and you leave in a few hours? Regular customer, yeah. Me in theatrical voice, what could go wrong? Regular customer, you bugger. This sounds like somebody with even worse uh, time management skills than even Uncle Reddit has, um, and I'm pretty bad. You're leaving the country for six months and you're just finishing your packing, getting your laptop fixed. I mean, you know, you want to go in and do some dental work this afternoon before your flight? I mean, what are, what are we doing here? I would have said, listen, you're not going to have this laptop, so you might as well just go buy one. I don't, I don't know. I need an email times seven. I work as an IT help desk answering calls and emails. I've been getting one email that says, I need an email. We answer it, provide the email. Issue resolved and close the ticket. We get it again. She has an issue with her computer, not a repeat. Solve the issue and close it out. We get it again. This time she needs help with a program, not a repeat. Solve the issue and close the ticket. We get it again and again and again. And this time I call her. Hello, I'm with IT support and I see you put in a ticket for needing an email. Which one did you need? She says, oh, I didn't know I put one in saying I needed an email. I need help with my phone. <laughs> I explain why this is a problem and give her the correct email for our ticket system. Hopefully this stops it. If not, I'm emailing her manager. I'm a little confused on this one, which is not a total shocker, but anyway. So does this mean like the subject line was getting auto-populated by something she typed in, you know, seven times ago? Or I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what what we're talking about here. Or was she just replying to the ticket system somehow and it just kept regenerating? I don't know. I'm sure one of you guys will uh, enlighten me down below. This is a stupid idea. I'm a fool to have thought of it. It worked though. Not a shop story, but a customer I met through working there. Could be any time from 2008-ish onward. Customer had an Apple laptop with a failing disk. I tried everything I could to get the data off it. USB bridge to my own MacBook directly connected to a PC with Linux or Windows HFS mount tools, various professional data recovery tools we downloaded off the internet at the shop. I managed to get some files back, but not all of what the customer was hoping for. I noticed one of these tools was making something like five attempts to read the file, timing out and giving up. Running the tool again maybe grabbed some different files, but wasn't gonna be time or cost effective to just repeat it and hope for the best, scanning the entire disk for hours each time. This gave me the idea to try something, similar to the data recovery tool but with the opposite intention, to transfer a file assuming it would take ages, or if it did fail to be able to set that file aside for another attempt, and not to waste time redoing successfully copied files. I'd seen something do this already. I still can't believe this worked. But after two weeks of using FileZilla to FTP to a local hard drive, I had pretty much everything customer wanted. Wake up in the morning, requeue failed transfers, leave it for another couple days. Field another call or two from customer. No, it's still running. Yeah, it's still getting more files though. 
Yes, I've tried it again since. No, this is the only time it ever worked. Eventually, I'm able to go around with what I have. Customer agreed whatever I'd got by then was good enough, and was probably 90% or more of what was there. We sit around the kitchen table while his eightish year old children hang out playing. He's very pleased looking through what has been recovered. And then he gives me one of my life's I'm old moments. Customer, I'm so glad you managed to get these back. All the pictures I have of my children are digital. I don't have any physical photos at all. I glance at his kids, then back to him. I recall my days in the darkroom at college doing photography. Red light, trays of chemicals, etc. Oh, noes. I find myself having more and more I'm old moments <laughs> as time goes on. I'm not as old as some, but I'm definitely older than others. I'm starting to feel like my dad in some ways because I'll, I'll tell stories that seem like they're so long ago. And, you know, when my 17 year old looks at me and says, 1990 what? And, uh, yeah, kind of gives you a little bit of a weird feeling in the pit of your gut when they say that. But anyway, we were looking through some old photos the other night uh, while I was shredding files from other boxes. Yeah, they were just amazed at, you know, the lack of my beard back then. One picture I'd be baby face, next picture I'd have the weird stash, next picture I'd have a goatee, Van Dyke, you name it. Had a little bit more hair on the top of my head, not by much though. I lost that before I even met my wife for the most part, so. Yup, those were the days back when I was growing up. Hope you enjoyed these stories today, and if you get a chance, click this video right here. I think you're going to enjoy these stories too. See ya.